Hey guys, welcome back to another Code Next Holes video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build better bridges by showing you three unique mod-free designs to help improve your builds. Firstly though, a Christmas giveaway. I'm giving away some Steam keys, specifically two codes for the base Code Next Holes game, one code for the Isle of Siptar, one for People of the Dragon DLC, and one for the Blood and Sand DLC, my two favourite DLCs of course. I'm running this giveaway from today, the 19th, until December the 24th. To enter, simply leave a comment below telling me your favourite place to build, either in the Exiled Lands or Siptar, and why. These codes are only for PC on the Steam platform, so please do bear that in mind before you enter. I'll be including the draw in the video on Friday, December 24th, so if you enter, be sure to come back for that video to see if you win. Winners will be contacted on Discord, Twitter, or email, so best of luck. So without further ado, let's get started. The first bridge design I'm going to be showing you is constructed from Aquilonian and Argosian, and it's designed to be a very bold, ornate bridge design that dominates the area. It will feature archways and vaulted ceilings heavily to accentuate that design, and it would be perfect as the run-up across water to a large Aquilonian palace or castle. Starting this design off is similar to how I'd recommend constructing almost any bridge, and that is by laying down your foundations or fence foundations to mark out your bridge pillars first, then removing the tiles between the pillars and then proceeding to build up the bridge itself. I am leaving two tiles between pillars to allow the vaulted ceilings to create proper archways under the bridge. Once you're happy with the pillar placement, you can then build the floor of your bridge and then any details on top. For this design, I'll be using walls, door frames, vaulted ceilings and roof pieces to create large archways that sit over the bridge. This is what will really help the bridge to stand out, and it definitely makes this design feel very unique. Once everything has been placed, and I've added some lighting and decoration, the bridge is complete and it looks wonderful. This could quite easily be a grand bridge design in an Aquilonian city, or it could simply be a large runway up to a grand palace. This is probably the most resource intensive design I have for you today, but it's worth it. It's a beautiful bridge that screams elegance and opulence. This next design is a great one for castles and outposts using the Namidian set. One of the biggest issues with bridges is that they often obstruct waterways too much, assuming they're placed over water, and this one does exactly the opposite. I started off by drawing out 8 tiles with fence foundations in the water and finding the midpoints, and then building two 3x3 three three platforms at either end of the 8 tile length. From there, I added Namidian gate frames to the fence foundations, and then built some small housings to protect the gate frames from the elements. This is a very simple bridge design that will work nicely for castles, and it's a design that works really nicely over both land and water, as it's entirely controllable in who can cross and when. Once I had completed the housings around the gate frames, I used sloped pieces and wall caps to decorate the housing and make it look much more attractive, and then from there I added a slight roof overhang on either side of the gate frames, and then I placed drawbridges. This is a convenient and super controllable bridge design, and you can see why it's perfect for castles and outposts. Drawbridges span four tiles from the gate frame, so you can get a massive eight tile gap between the gate frames with absolutely no pillars or posts. It is a much lighter and arguably less important feeling design than the Aquilonian option, but you can definitely make some very grand bridges with the Namidian set. However, this simple design works really nice as a controllable, space effective and lightweight option for your bridge needs. Finally, a strong and imposing bridge design that is ideal for use in militaristic builds and strongholds. I'm using the Frontier Material set to build this bridge, and I started by, similar to the Aquilonian design, marking out the pillars beforehand. Once this was complete, I then built staircases on either side of the bridge to access the traversable area itself, though I made this section different from the rest by adding a winding single tile staircase, as opposed to just straight up stairs. Once these platforms were complete, I then raised the pillars and placed the ceilings, creating an empty one tile buffer below the floor of the bridge to facilitate the roof pieces later on. 
You don't have to do this, but if you don't do this, you will 100% get these weird little tops of the roof pieces poking through the bridge, and I detest that, so we're not doing that today. Once that was complete, I then went ahead and added inverted sloping sides underneath the buffer tile between the pillars, and then I added in the aforementioned roof pieces. This is a similar concept to the Aquilonian bridge, but by instead using these triangle arches, it makes the bridge feel a bit stronger and more imposing, whereas the smoothed out circular arches from the vaulted ceilings, they look nice but they definitely feel more intricate and elegant, something that wouldn't work nearly as well for this build. Once I'd finished the base of the bridge, I then added extra detail with frontier frames and roof pieces to create a sort of castle battlement style design atop the bridge, which I think works quite nicely. From there, I added sloping sides running opposite ways away from the centre of the bridge. I was originally going to use wall caps or crenellated walls, but the slope sides just work so much better for this design, and it definitely makes things feel a bit more imposing and violent. It also has some very nice parity with the triangular arches underneath the bridge. Once I finished that, I added some simple decoration with war banners and fenced off the braziers, and the final build design was complete. This is a strong and intimidating design that has quite a violent feeling about it, and again, it would be perfect for a militarised build or for a stronghold. And there we have it, three unique build designs to help you build better bridges. Thanks for watching, bridges are deceptively difficult at times, and though I've probably only done a handful of them across my many, many builds, hopefully these designs will help you to make your own builds that much more interesting. Also, again, don't forget to leave a comment below for your chance to win one of five Conan Exile Steam codes, either for the full game or the DLC. I'll be drawing the winners on Friday the 24th of December. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, Discord roles and more. On that note, a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, CoffeeMan04, and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>